If you're reading the title of this video and you see it's called Final Volumes, I just want to promise right now there are no spoilers in this video for any of the series that I'm going to be mentioning today. Hello friends, happy Wednesday. So excited that you're here. It is another week of Top 5 Wednesday or another video for Top 5 Wednesday. Very, very excited. Had to do some searching in my backlog for some new series to feature today because I'm like, I don't want to do just Haiku because obviously we all know that's one of my final favorite final volumes. I'm like, well, I don't want to do just that or like a few other series I feel like I've talked about very recently and tried to change it up. Hopefully I am successful. But in case if you're not familiar with Top 5 Wednesday, in a nutshell, basically each week I answer a prompt using five books, but in this case, I do manga to reflect the said prompt. And today's prompt is final volumes. I'm not really sure which is more satisfying, having like a great beginning to a series or having a great ending to a series. But I feel like regardless, it's always deeply satisfying when you read that final volume and it just like meets all of your expectations. It wraps up loose ends and just has a great happy ending, at least hopefully, because that is definitely for me. I like to have those happy endings. So today I'm featuring final volumes that I I feel like lived up to that where they met my expectations. Like I said the loose ends were wrapped up and just had a great satisfying ending that left me just feeling hopefully really wonderful, maybe a little bit emotional, but if I'm feeling emotional, it's not like somebody just died kind of emotional. Do you know what I'm talking about? Cause I'm like, I don't want that. No, no, I don't. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start though. For number one, I am featuring Sayonara Football, but I want to be specific here. I am featuring Sayonara Football, the prequel series to Sayonara Football Farewell, my dear Kramer. I did not really enjoy that series and specifically I did enjoy it because Nozomi was not the main character and Nozomi is the main character in Sayonara Football. It is a two volume sports manga. I'm actually really bummed that I sold that series like a year ago. Please don't ask me why because I asked myself why and I'm like Laura you don't have an answer why you sold it why did you sell it? Because I was rereading my review I wrote on Goodreads for it and I actually have two video reviews up on this channel. I have volume one if you want to check it out here and then I was so excited for volume two. I remember reading it getting a digital copy on NetGalley and then pre-ordering the physical copy because I just loved it so much and then doing a review of volume two as well. And yeah, I don't know why I sold it. I'm like, Laura, you need to try and snatch that back up and read it because Nozomi is a fantastic character in this series. I loved volume one. Volume two is just action-packed soccer. But what makes it action-packed too or has like more stakes to it is that Nozomi is a female and she just wants to play soccer, but she, I think she doesn't have a female soccer team at her high school, so she wants to join the boys' soccer team. She's sort of on the boys' soccer team, but she can't play in any official games. There is a fantastic twist that happens at the end of Volume 1. You see that unfold in Volume 2, and it was just amazing. The conflict that was happening, not necessarily on the team, but with Nozomi, she is bumping heads with this one character that she's like, I just want to beat him. And the ending was something else. I can't say anything because again spoilers but I loved the series or the two volume series I should say I really just Nozomi is a very engaging character where you're very invested in seeing how is she going to make the most of this chance and is she going to be successful at the chance that she has sort of taken to make her dream hopefully come true. I highly recommend it if you're looking for just a short two volume sports manga, lots of stakes, great art, and so good soccer moments that honestly just remind me of when I was playing soccer as a kid. And I'm just like, man, this is what soccer is all about. Highly, highly recommend it. For number two, talking about manga that I also sold off and I actually rebought it this morning though, is The Heiress and the Chauffeur. This is by the same creator of Prince Freya and she does another series that I was like oh my goodness I had no idea that she did this series I don't remember what that one's about but I loved this series it is sort of like a forbidden romance between an heiress and her chauffeur only two volumes and I loved volume one so much and then I read volume two so much wonderful things happen in this I feel like maybe it's not like this incredible story or anything it doesn't necessarily do anything different though I love the forbidden romance I just really felt like my heart just want to explode out of my chest I felt all 
the butterflies. I was squealing. There's definitely some tension and some stakes because of course somebody's got to come in and say that they can't be together and put their foot down on it. And of course it's going to leave our main girl feeling absolutely heartbroken. And of course it's going to leave our hero doing everything he can to help intervene and help them be together. And the ultimate question is, do they get together at the end? And because this is spoiler free, I can't say anything, but it does have a happy ending. And I really just loved how the second volume unfolded. I don't know which one I liked more, if I liked the first volume more or the second volume more, but I could say that I really enjoyed the series. And it's another one I'm like, why did I sell it off? I don't know. I read that series probably two to three times, just like if I've read it more than once. Obviously, I super enjoy it. I think other others would as well, despite that it didn't have like the best of rate ratings. I believe this manga is set in the Taisho era. And so I really like the blend of the Japanese culture and you're having like some of the Western influence, especially when it came to, well, sounds sort of weird, but the vehicles I remember being in the manga. And so seeing our main girl, just she's very spunky and she's very daring, not afraid to take risks and such. And obviously that has to be the case if she is in love with her chauffeur and trying to be with him. If you enjoy historical romance with some drama and like so that forbidden romance, I would definitely recommend checking out this series. I just thought it was so beautifully wrapped up. I really enjoyed, I don't know if it was like a bonus chapter or an epilogue, but that like even now it's very vivid in my mind of how much I appreciate that chapter and how like the characters stay true to themselves to the very end. Even when we have like a sort of like a time skip, everything was fantastic. And I said I bought that series before this video because I'm like, I need to reread it. But hopefully I can actually do a formal video review on this channel when it comes in because I need more people to read. it. It's so great. It's a very fun two volume series with a great ending. Coming in for number three, I have to say Oh Haru Ride. This took me on an emotional adventure. That middle, I don't want to say like, when I say that it's messy, I don't feel like the writing is messy, but the decisions that the characters are making creates a lot of drama very messy in that department. Just like, oh my goodness, you just sort of want to shake the characters at different times. But the ending of this was absolutely beautiful. It went well above anything I was hoping and expecting in this final volume because I was really, really nervous. Like when we're getting to that climax and we're in those last few volumes before volume 13, because this is a 13 volume series, I was anxious. I was feeling all of the angst. I really didn't know what was going to happen. But these characters, I was here for the long haul. I don't want to say it paid off, but I really Really loved their love story, Futaba and Kyo Kyo's. I mean, it definitely was really, really hard at times seeing, like I said, again, the decisions that they make. They're not necessarily hurting anybody, not a lot, but they're hurting themselves in a sense. And I feel like they really grew through each volume, like the characters themselves did, and just was so honored to be on this adventure with them, especially this final volume. It is my favorite volume in the series. I really, really loved it. I knew after I read the series, because I believe, no, I had. I have most of the series already, but when I read the last half, I had to borrow copies from my library. I knew I wanted this final volume because it was just so special to me. It has a strobe edge bonus story and I, or bonus chapter. And I was like, yes, I really loved it. Also really loved this cover. So it just had everything going for it. There was healing, there was reconciliation, and there was just this beautiful reunion that I really I really loved. It just was a beautiful thing to my heart, especially when I said we had all of the drama that was happening. Some of the characters didn't make those best decisions. Can't say names, but there's people coming to my mind right now. But if you'd like to see a full review on this, I did review this last year during the 25 Days of Shoujo manga. I still need to read Iosaki Saka's Let Me Let Me Not because she's the only manga creator I'm willing to endure all the angst because I always know when I get to the end, it's gonna be so incredibly beautiful. I'm gonna love all the characters and and that has been true every single time. Like it never fails. And so I would highly recommend this if you really enjoy high school romance and you're like, okay, you can give me all the angst through the middle of the story, but it better give me some healing and relieve my angst by the end. This series, this final volume does that so very well. Highly recommend. For number four, talking about everything coming together in a beautiful, emotional, and powerful way, Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts is 
one of them. This series is so deeply moving. There are so many layers. I was thinking about this last night and I need to get up on the anime because I know it's still, I believe it's still ongoing, but I don't really know anybody that's watching it. But I had a friend like, Laura, have you seen it? It's really good. It matches the anime and I, or the manga. And I always appreciate when anime have a really faithful adaptation to the manga because that's just something important to me. There are so many different elements that I could talk about this story, but I'm just going to say if you want a more in-depth and also non-spoiler review of that, please check it out here because I was so moved by this and seeing like just skimming through this before this video of how really these characters have changed the messages that just shine where there's no barriers between any kind of race regardless of what they look like or again regardless of their race I feel like this is a series that challenges each and every reader to think about how do I view people around me how do I view the world around me do I have personal bias against other people because of their their ethnicity their sexuality or their political or religious beliefs, do those things impact me where I am treating other people in a negative way because of my own personal thoughts, feelings, and opinions? And again, just that bias. This series honestly addresses all of that. I really feel like the takeaway from this series affects us in the real world and how we can change how we treat other people and how we can also come to accept who we are. Sometimes we may not be happy or thankful for, say, our upbringing or our back stories in general, but this series really shows you need to love yourself. There's only one you and only you can love you. I mean, other people can love you, but maybe I didn't explain that well, but I really love all of the messages and the themes and seeing that all come full circle, not even full circle, seeing, yes, for Sarifa, our main girl, seeing that come full circle for her and how she has always been diligent and just persevered whenever she was being discriminated against. She never changed her view of the beast. She never was fearful of them. So seeing her come full circle, but seeing many of the characters, many of the beasts specifically, change how they view humans is absolutely amazing. I can't re recommend this series enough. I feel like I do not talk about it enough on my channel. And I'm like, Laura, you need to change that because this is one of those reads I feel like is life changing in the sense that you don't just read it, walk away. And you're like, oh, that was a great romance. No, you read it and this is a great romance, but you're genuinely thinking of how I was saying before, of how can I change my own actions and my interactions with other people. Again, cannot recommend it enough. So very good. Eventually, I will check out the anime because I finally have watched the latest two episodes of The Heretical Last Boss Queen. So I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm really proud of myself. And I'm keeping up with my happy marriage. I'm like, this is progress for me when I'm always, always behind. But anyway, check this out. Whether it's the manga or the anime, I've heard it's a very great adaptation. So if you can't get your hands on the manga, definitely check out the anime. For number five, I'm so excited to talk about about this manga. Unfortunately, it's a digital only, but that is I'm in love and it's scene of the world. I love this manga. I read it like I think it was back in January. And then I also featured it here recently on the ABCs of Shoujo for the letter I and I just cannot gush about this series enough though that last volume when I think of a really strong volume that left a huge impact on me when I was reading it at the time and was beautifully wrapped up. It is this series. I was so emotional. This is a five volume volume series from Kodansha that's digital only but it's about the main girl she has a twin sister who is very popular she's very cute she gets all the guys and our main girl I think her name is Mahiru she always feels like she's being pushed aside like not necessarily by her twin sister but that everybody just forgets her and that if there's any good luck to happen it always happens to her popular twin sister and if there's any bad luck it always gets pushed off on her and so she really just believes that like nothing good is ever going to happen to her because it's just sort of like her luck in life. But then this young boy, his name is Aoi, I think that's how you say his name, comes into her life and he actually really likes her and she doesn't know why he's so determined to like her and wants her to be his girlfriend. Like she doesn't understand why. But she ends up saying yes, even though she's terrified that she's like, there's going to be bad luck. Like she even makes, I think, I don't know if it was as a gift or it was just that day. She makes so many good luck charms. Like she has a full pillow just stuffed with good luck charms because that is how fearful and worried she is that this is just 
going to be a passing fluke. That sort of continues through the series of where she's you see the internal battle and the internal struggle and just how she does not view herself in a way where she feels like she has any worth or that she has any matter. And again, that just with her falling in love that the world's going to end because she just doesn't deserve this kind of thing. That was really hard throughout this series because not just her, but even Ali, the main hero, he's got his own struggles going on. And when you see everything sort of crashed out a little bit and unfolds in the final volume, I was not necessarily nervous, maybe a little bit. I feel like I was a little bit anxious about what exactly is going to happen because something blows up and it was just so heartbreaking for our main girl. She had made so much progress up to that point and it's like, is she going to like fall back and believe that she doesn't deserve these good things in her life, deserves to be with this young man? With no spoilers, I will just say thankfully it ends on a really happy and emotional moving note where there's just so much healing and reconciliation, not just between her and the hero, but also other characters in her life. And I just remember being so deeply moved that I cried when I was reading it because I'm like, you have come so far, girl. And to see her heal and really just bloom and shine as a young woman, an individual, not as the twin sister or not as the shadow of her twin sister, but her as an individual was deeply, deeply satisfying. It is a very strong volume. It was my favorite volume in that series, despite that I cried, despite that there was a little bit of upset and, you know, temporarily some heartache. It was very beautiful just seeing everything come together by the end. I so wish that we had that series in print. It is one that I knew if I had on my shelf and I could just physically pick it off there, I would read more than once because that is just how moving, emotionally moving it was and just how deeply satisfying that final volume is. Again, it was my favorite in that series and can't recommend this series enough. For my honorable mention, I'm not going to say much about this because I actually have a review coming out this Friday of it and that is my co-worker has a secret. I love this series. It is so incredibly good. This final volume was fantastic. Really just lived up to the expectations that I had and really love how things unfold. That's all I'm going to say about it though because I'm afraid I'll go into a full review here and I'm like, no, we have to wait for the review on Friday. So if you're curious of my thoughts on this two volume series, which I found out does have either a live action drama or has like a movie or something, I, I need to see it because I, I love these characters. This series captured my heart so very good and I say I have to stay tuned till Friday for me to talk about it more. And that my friends are all of my picks for final volumes. Like I said, no spoilers, which is always nice because who wants the final volume to be spoiled for them? At least I feel like it's really rarely that we want that. But I would love to hear from you friends. What are some final volumes to series that you feel were just really strong and well done? And you're like, yes, this is a good ending. I would love to hear from you friends. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Bye. Thank you.